All right, I really like number 36 here too. So uh, I probably drew more of this diagram than I needed to, but this was the main diagram you had for this whole batch of problems right here. I think it was maybe 12 problems. Um, and, and in 36, uh, just this one here, they're asking you to find the volume of the solid that's, that's created when you take region B, which is just kind of the lower right half of this region, and we're revolving it around the y-axis. So this thing is spinning here horizontally around a vertical line. So probably the first thing I would do, as I always kind of encourage you guys to do as well, is to draw this region out by making the 180 degree reflection of what it is that you're going to see. So region B then flipped around the y-axis would probably come up here and look something like that, okay? Which really tells me I can probably ignore most of what we're looking at here and get rid of that, and that's probably going to make my life a little bit easier. So we're drawing, or excuse me, we're creating, and hopefully drawing, this three-dimensional solid that looks something like this, and then it's going to do something similar up here on top. Okay, so what are we dealing with now? This kind of looks like a bowl as well. It looks like it's a solid circle on the bottom, and then this thing kind of has a concavity uh, dug out of it right here. So we're going to basically create a bowl, but I'll tell you why this problem is interesting. It's not a choice that we get to make here, guys. Because our axis of revolution is vertical, this is definitely a dy problem. That's not a choice that you guys get to make. And the interesting thing is that this region is two different things depending on where you are vertically along the y-axis. When this thing cuts the y-axis right here at 2, it actually creates a solid right here, guys, and everything below this little slice that I've drawn right here is effectively just a cylinder. Okay, it's just a circular disk. And then up on top, what we now have is this region above it here that's got all of this space between the solid itself and the axis of revolution. So that means, everybody, that we're going to be using washers for sure up on top. And then down on the bottom part of this thing, we could either just use the formula for volume of a cylinder from geometry, or better yet, I think we can do this using basically what we call solid disks everybody, which is kind of the normal circular cross-section method. So this is a really unusual problem here because our region gets split and we really need to do it in two different ways. So I'm going to go purple for actually, let me do this. Let me go black first and say the overall plan right here is for volume of the entire uh, region here. We're going to do the volume of the lower cylinder and add to that the volume of the upper region right there, which is going to use washers. So with that plan in mind, let's get started right here. Volume equals, and now here's where I was going to switch to purple. Let's get working on the lower section right over here. So we'll do, yeah. Now let's use calculus, guys. We're going to do an integral right there uh, for that piece down on the bottom here in purple. So our cross sections are all going to be circles, and our radius, okay, is just going to remain constant whether we're here or here or all the way right up to there. That radius is going to be a, a constant value. So our formula now is going to be pi multiplied by whatever that radius is squared. Well, you can see all three of those purple radii that I drew go from x equals 2 to the y-axis, x equals 0. They all have a radius of 2, so we're going to square that 2 to get a 4 there. And that's it for the integrand, guys. Every one of those circles there is going to have an area of 4 pi. We're integrating this with respect to y. And our limits of integration, we start this thing at its lower y value right here of 0, and we end it right up here at y equals 2. So that, you guys, is going to get us the volume of the lower part of the bowl here. But the upper part is going to be more interesting right here. Because of that gap in between, uh, we're going to have washers that we have to deal with. So I think I'm going to switch to green here, guys, and start talking about what's going on here. Now up on the top, big R is going to go from the axis of revolution through the first curve all the way to the second. So there's big R, and again, I hope you guys can see this, whether that big R is up here or down here or anything like that in between, that radius is going to remain constant here at 2. That's big R. Little r is the more interesting piece, though. Little r starts at the axis of revolution and goes right until you get to the first curve. So little r 
is a variable piece that moves horizontally. We have to measure that as right curve minus left curve. Further complicating things, we said earlier, everything we're doing is respect to, uh, with respect to y, but unfortunately, that parabola is solved for y. We need it solved for x. So let me kind of cram in some work over here, guys, and see what we can find here. We would get x squared is equal to, and that would now be a y minus 2, and then we would take the square root of both sides here and get, here we go, x is equal to, now there should be a plus or minus in front of that square root of y minus 2, but remember what that gives you is the two halves of this parabola here, guys, that parabola being this curve right over there, there you go, and we really only care about the right half of that parabola, which is the positive root of y minus 2. So that is the equation of the right piece. So again, I'm trying to measure the length of r right over here, right minus left. What stops r on the right? This equation right here, the square root of y minus 2 minus what stops r on the left? Well, again, that's the y-axis, or x equals 0. So now I feel silly. I didn't need to write that minus zero there. All right, and what we have right there, guys, is as good as little r is going to get. So trying to do this on the fly right here, the volume of this, whoop, 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 there we go, the volume of this upper region is going to be a definite integral, and the formula for area of a washer, I'm kind of doing a lot in my head here, guys, is pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So I'll put the pi here, which is inconsistent because I didn't do that here, sorry, but pi, and then big R squared would just be a 4 minus little r squared is just going to be y minus 2 because the square and the square root will cancel each other out. We're integrating with respect to y and our limits of integration for this top part, this region starts right here at 2 and ends right up here at y equals 6. So that's what we have here, guys. And I'm going to tell you what I'm sure you didn't want to hear. I'm going to do this by hand because I don't think it looks that hard. Um, I would have no problem at all if you guys chose to use your calculator here. But you know me. I like to be difficult. Uh, so what happens here, guys? This 4 and pi would just come all the way out in front. 4 pi, leaving you with an integrand then of just 1. And when you integrate 1 with respect to y, that just becomes y, evaluated from 0 to 2. That wasn't that hard. Um, but, all right, plus, here's where I'm going to goof up. Let's see, I'm going to just simplify this integrand right above it right here, guys. That is going to be a 4 plus 2, so that'll be a 6 minus y. So let's just get rid of that, and let's integrate that in our heads. But, ooh, don't forget the pi right there. Gotcha. Antiderivative of 6 is going to be 6y, and then antiderivative of a minus y is a minus 1 half y squared, all going from 2 to 6. Okay, this seems tolerable so far. Let's see what happens next here, guys. We've got a 4 pi right there times 2 minus 0. I think I can handle that. And then plus a pi times, ooh, I better use brackets right here. This could get a little messy. Putting the 6 in first, 6 times 6 is 36, minus 36, half of that is going to be an 18. That's what we get from the 6, minus, let's put the 2 in now. 6 times 2 is going to be 12, minus 1 half of 2 squared, half of 4, is going to be 2. All right, so where are we now, guys? 2 times 4 pi, the volume of that cylinder on the bottom of this thing is just going to be an 8 pi. Plus, let's see here, the 36 minus 18 just becomes an 18. 12 minus 2 just becomes 10, and the 18 minus 10 is going to be 8 times that pi, oh, that's convenient, we'll get another 8 pi right there, which I'm pretty sure means that my overall answer here is going to be 16 pi cubic units for the vol volume of that entire solid. Checking the solutions manual, that one works out, so it looks like we got the right answer to this problem here. So just to recap, this is definitely an unusual problem because 
The way that this thing is set up, you had to do this as two different integrals. The lower region and the upper region follow two different sets of rules, really two different formulas for volume. So you really had to do this one with two different integrals. Hopefully that makes some sense to you guys though. And hopefully the way we split this problem up, kind of cutting it right down the middle right here and then putting everything together at the end, hopefully that made some sense to you guys as well. So there's 36 for you.